subscribe to our youtube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates hello everyone rahul shah here trying to make investing accessible and profitable for the average investor now i am a huge cricket buff in the society premises where i play my weekend game of cricket there are a few gifted fielders everyone wants in their team no matter how hard a ball is hit these guys seem to always find a way to stop it and then dart it back to the bowler i often wonder what is it that makes them such great fielders as far as i can tell none of them is calculating things like air resistance or ball trajectory their dexterity seems to be the result simply of a sharp intuitive sense that has been honed through years of practice it all boils down to a few simple thumb rules one of the fielders commented i keep my eyes firmly fixed on the ball the moment it leaves the bowler's hand and start taking small steps so as to be able to quickly move in the direction of the ball you keep doing this year in and year out and over time you become very skilled at it that's it there's nothing more to it he concluded rather nonchalantly now it's amazing how a process that appears complex and requires sophisticated techniques can be so easily mastered with just a few thumb rules i'm sure if a scientist were to tackle this problem no doubt a complex array of factors would be involved and yet i doubt their track record would be as good as the acrobatic fielders i play with noted psychologist gerd gigerenzer views the act of catching a ball as nothing but dealing with uncertainty it is highly complex and involves lot of variables and he argues that complex uncertain problems cannot be solved through complex methods on the contrary the more complex the situation the better it is to use a few simple rules in other words the most potent weapon against complexity is simplicity the fielders i play with prove that it works in the real world now where would investing lie on the uncertainty spectrum well if gigerenza is to be believed it lies right where uncertainty is at a maximum <laughs> well i agree with him there is no such thing as risk free investment every investment carries a certain amount of risk with itself and in that sense the returns are not 100% guaranteed and are therefore uncertain now if returns are uncertain especially when it comes to stocks then simple methods and simple thumb rules should outperform more ca complex calculations isn't it of course gigerenza is a psychologist not an investor therefore you might be skeptical so let us turn to the greatest investing minds to see what they have to say on this debate of simplicity versus complexity Now here's what Benjamin Graham once said about using higher mathematics in investing. He says and I quote, mathematics is ordinarily considered to be producing precise and dependable results, but in the stock market the more elaborate and abstruse the mathematics, the more uncertain and speculative are the conclusions we draw therefrom. Looks like Ben Graham agrees with Gigerenza. Here's Warren Buffett on the subject. If you need to use a computer or calculator to figure it out, you should not buy the investment. Those types of situations fall into the too hard bucket. It should be obvious. It should shout at you without all the spreadsheets. Even Buffett seems to be in favor of simplicity over complexity in investing. Now one of Peter Lynch's golden rules of investing dictates never invest in any idea you can't illustrate with a crayon. So there you have it. Three of the world's best investors seem to agree that complex methods have no place in successful long-term investing. In fact, the moment a situation turns complex, it is a sign that an investor is taking undue risks. He should quickly drop the idea from his consideration. and move on to something simpler therefore taking inspiration from this idea of keeping things extremely simple here's a simple rule to follow for stock market investing 
You see, one of the biggest challenges in investing is figuring out when to invest and in which stocks. Again, the same two options are available to you. You can either rely on a simple rule of thumb or build a complex model that could involve hundreds of data points being fed into a computer to arrive at the answer. Well, I'd go with the first option. Here's my simple thumb rule when it comes to deciding when to take maximum exposure to stocks and in which ones. You see, a good time to invest in the stock market is when more than 80 stocks with revenues of at least rupees 200 crores and debt to equity ratio of less than one are trading at a minimum 20% discount to their latest book values. Let me repeat that. When the number of stocks that are trading below book value cross 80, it is a good time to take a large exposure to stocks. Now here's a table that shows why I arrived at this conclusion. You see, back in the year 2016, there were 55 stocks that were trading below price to book of 0.8 times, revenues of minimum rupees 2 billion or 200 crores, and with debt to equity of less than one. And out of these 55, a whopping 93% of the stocks went to give positive returns over the next two years. This means that out of 55 stocks that were trading at least 20% below book value, a full 51 stocks ended up giving positive returns over a two-year holding period. Likewise, there were 137 stocks that satisfied all the criteria at the start of 2020, and out of those, a huge 91% went on to give positive returns, and so on. Barring the year 2016, a high strike rate is associated with years when the number of stocks trading below book value are more than 80, and barring the year 2019, a low strike rate is associated with the year when the number of such stocks are below 80. These two years, that is 2016 and 2019, are the exceptions to the norm, and it is fine, because if you have an investment lifetime of 20 to 25 years, you can live with a few years of exceptions. So here's the conclusion one can draw from this table. When the number of stocks with the revenue of at least rupees 2 billion, price to book value of less than 0.8 times and a debt to equity ratio of less than one cross more than 80, it could be a good time to take maximum exposure to stocks. Likewise, when the number of such stocks go significantly below 80, it may be a good time to reduce exposure to stocks. Now I know we can't make such sweeping statements based on a data of handful of years. But I think logically also this approach does make a lot of sense. A large number of stocks trading below price to book value are usually seen when the broader market has fallen from its top and is itself trading at attractive valuations. Therefore, when the market recovers, the low price to book stocks also recover and this leads to a high strike rate over the next couple of years. Likewise, a small number of low price to book stocks means that the markets are expensive and could fall over the next year or two. And therefore, it may not be a great idea to take large exposure to such stocks when the number is significantly below 80. Also, a stock does well when it is undervalued and is also of decent quality. By looking at only low price to book value stocks, we are making sure that the stock is undervalued and by ensuring a debt to equity ratio of less than one, we are also paying attention to its quality. Therefore, both from the standpoint of the broader market and the individual stocks, this approach does appear to be highly logical, and which is why the outcome is so encouraging. Now, coming to the most important question, is this the time to take maximum exposure to stocks or to bring it down drastically? While the number of stocks below book value and also satisfying the other conditions of revenue and debt to equity is roughly around 120 right now. Yes, there are 120 stocks that are trading at a minimum 20% discount to book value. This means that if history is any indication, there is no reason why a portfolio of 15 to 20 stocks chosen from this group should not do well over the next couple of years. Therefore, if one is looking to put together a portfolio of undervalued stocks and is confused with stocks to buy, the stocks with the characteristics I just discussed can be a good option. 
he can maybe set aside 50 or 25 percent of his corpus as cash to be invested later and can invest the rest in stocks that satisfy both the quantitative as well as the qualitative criteria like our universe does. In case you're wondering how can investing be so simple, well it is supposed to be simple as I pointed out at the start of this piece. However, it is by no means easy and often involves going against the crowd. It is this obstacle that you need to overcome. Let us know your thoughts on this simple approach by commenting in the comment section. Also, please do not forget to give a like in case you found the video useful. Until next time, goodbye and take care.